this video goes out to all of our Christian friends out there from the Jewish people. As you can imagine right now with the situation what's going on in Israel after the horrific attacks on October 7th and after you see all these parades going on of celebration from Hamas supporters, you could imagine how the Jewish people feel not so supported right now, but I got to tell you, our Christian friends have been so amazing, so loving, so embracing, so supportive, and really our people have always shared a common value system known as the Judeo-Christian values. And there's a reason why that has been a saying and a phrase for so long is because we do share so many commonalities amongst each other. And I want to share with you um, in this class today, and please stay until the end because a whole bunch of blessings are coming your way. And I want you to know about all of them and how to get them and how to receive them and why you're getting them. And uh, we're going to explore today from the Torah, from the Old Testament, we're going to be reading in Hebrew a little bit today. I'm going to be reading in Hebrew and translating for you so you can know exactly uh, what is going on behind the scenes in heaven and uh, and exactly you know how we could benefit from this whole thing. So let's just jump right into it. Um, I want to also just mention that there's a concept in Judaism which is called living with the times. So we take the Torah, again, also known as the Old Testament, the Bible, and we split the Torah up into... Each week has its own what's called Parsha, which is the chapter for that week. And this week we're learning Parsha. It's called Lech Lecha. It's in the book of uh, Genesis. And it is the first time where we're being introduced to the uh, first Jewish person in the world, which is Abraham, in Hebrew, Avraham. And he is the person who brought monotheism to the world. All the great religions of the world are all based on the work that Abraham did. And we see something very unique in this week's Parsha. It says, and I'm gonna, again, I'm going to read the Hebrew. And Hashem, God, says to Abraham, I'm going to make you into a great nation. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to make your name great in this world. And you will become a blessing to all the nations. And here's where it gets interesting for our Christian friends. By the way, it doesn't just apply to Christians. It really applies to anybody. Um, right now, unfortunately, it looks like most of the Muslim world, I say most because not all, but most of them are absolutely blinded with this concept of wiping um, the my people off the face of the earth with this whole free Palestine uh, nonsense and it looks like they are in the heat of the moment and blinded and they just can't understand this so for now I'm talking to our Christian friends hopefully eventually the Muslims will come around and hopefully everybody else will come around but for now I'm talking to you okay so it says God says to Abraham I will bless those who bless you and the ones who curse you, I will curse. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. And that's really what I want to focus on in today's class is Hashem says, God says to the, Hashem is the Hebrew word for uh, God's name. Um, it literally means the name. God says to Abraham, I will bless the nations. Anybody who blesses you, I will bless. And anybody who curses you, I will curse. We're going to talk about the blessings in just a moment, but let's talk about the cursing for one second, okay? Because we have to go there. I know, you know, everybody wants to be kumbaya and everything, you know, is, is liberal and everybody's friends and everything, but let's just talk for a second about the curses. If you look at history of the world, anybody who ever cursed the Jews ended up going down in history as a villain, starting with the ancient Egyptians going to the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, all the way up until Nazi Germany, which, by the way, I, I want to give in this class, I want to give a shout-out to Germany, because i got to tell you that Germany is standing by the Jewish people right now in the land of Israel so incredibly. I don't think anybody would have ever imagined the support. Could you imagine a people... Germans, you know, in Judaism, we believe that a person could do in Hebrew what's called teshuvah, which means they could repent, they could return. 
And the Germans, 75 years ago, they perpetrated some of the greatest atrocities known to men, but you see that they have collectively, as a society, they have become better, they have grown, they are maturing, and they have decided to do what they can in order to right their wrongs. And although many of my family died in the Holocaust, was killed in the Holocaust, I will tell you as a Jew, I wholeheartedly forgive them because we in Judaism, we don't look at people's past sins, but we look at where are they standing today? Where are they holding today? Are they holding in a place where they're trying to do better, where they're trying to ameliorate themselves? And the answer for Germany happens to be yes. But in terms of the curses, you know, it. I mean, while we're on the subject in Germany, the leader of Germany, I don't even want to say his name, but the leader of Germany at the time of the Holocaust, he was hailed as a hero. You have to understand that this man had a vision to make Germany great, and he was hailed as, a, as somebody with a great idealistic approach to the world, and he was going to rid the world of their biggest problem, which was the Jew. And you see, 75 years later, it didn't take even that long, when anybody is ever trying to call out something wrong, they automatically call them a Nazi. Why? Because he cursed the Jews. And ultimately, he went down in history as an absolute evil person. Anybody throughout history who has ever been labeled, who ever tried to curse the Jews, go against the Jews, destroy them, whatever it was, in history ended up going down as a villain. And ultimately, what we'll see from this whole nightmare that we're going through is... Anybody who supports the Palestinians and the and Hamas, I, by the way, you should know, Jews also want to free Palestine. We want to free it from Hamas. But anybody who supports Hamas right now and supports the murder of innocent children, babies, they will eventually go down as villains. Give it a day, give it a week, give it a month, give it a year, give it a decade, give it a generation but when it goes down in history books, they will not go down as freedom fighters. They're going to go down as barbaric villains that they are. So you see that anybody who ever tried to rise up against the Jews ultimately ended up becoming cursed. Why? Is it because the Jews are smarter than anybody else? Or because they're stronger than, stronger than anybody else? More numerous than anybody else? No, none of the above. It's because it is written in the Bible. It's because God said so. Just like God created the world. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He said, let there be animals, let there be humans, let there be all these things. Just like God created those things, God also created within the algorithm of the universe. You curse the Jews, you become cursed. But that's enough for the cursings for now. Let's talk about the blessings that people will receive. Nations, people, individual people, and also nations will receive from blessing the Jewish people. It doesn't take a genius to understand that when you take care of another person's child that he will show you favor i mean i'm sure i'm sure a lot of you right now are parents that are watching this and you ever pick up your child from one of your friends houses or imagine even better imagine one of your neighbors saved your child from a burning house Imagine how much appreciation you would have for your neighbor when he brought your child out of that house and he saved your child from immediate harm. How much joy, how much blessing you would have for that other person. How much good you would want to do for your neighbor for saving your child. Jews are Hashem's child, are God's child. Abraham had two children, he had Isaac, and he had Jacob. Sorry, he originally had Isaac, Jacob comes later. And Isaac is the one who carries God's divine mission into this world. So the family line of Abraham goes through Isaac, right? It could have gone through Esau, his brother, but it comes through Isaac. And when you take care of God's, for whatever reason, you know, sometimes we ask, <laughs> Jews say, can God choose somebody else for once? Meaning, we didn't, we didn't choose to be chosen, we didn't ask to be chosen, it's not our choice. For whatever reason, God chose 
Isaac to carry on his divine mission in this world. So when we, when you bless the progeny of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God appreciates that so much. When you're saving his children, when you are blessing his children, in turn, God will ultimately bless you. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. It's, it's math. You take care of my children, I'll take care of you. And that's the message that I want to give to our Christian friends who might be watching this right now, or anybody else for that matter, that we, we see you, we appreciate you, we embrace you, and not only do we see you, but God himself sees your efforts, God himself sees your blessings, and ultimately, he will bless you. And a, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, am I scared? I'm not scared. I'm an Orthodox, visibly Jewish man. And people ask me, am I scared? Am I scared for Israel? Am I scared for the, God forbid, for the annihilation of our people? And I got to tell you, there, and the answer is absolutely 0% am I scared? Because God, at the end of the day, is more powerful than any stupid protest. God is stronger than any of the anti-Semitism that is rising right now. God ultimately has a mission in this world, a divine mission. And God's mission will be seen until the end. And they say that in the end it will be good. And if it's not good, it means that it's not the end. So, no, we're not scared. Are we shaken? 100% we're shaken. Are we fragile right now? Are we in mourning? 100%. Are we scared? At the end of the day, we are believers, sons of believers. And our faith holds us. And we know, ultimately, that good wins over bad. Light wins over dark every single time. We've seen it played out. We've seen it played out hundreds of times over Jewish history. And ultimately, the ones that sided and supported the Jewish people, they themselves in turn got blessed by the creator of the universe themselves. So I want to thank you for that. Also, I want to just throw this out there that I am open to speak to any religious congregation, any Christian congregation. I'm happy to do it via Zoom. I'm happy to do it via Instagram or whatever it is. And I will do it free of charge to give strength, to give hope, to, to create understanding and education, and ultimately uh, do what we all want, which is to see the third temple built in Jerusalem, where we could all serve God as one people, where there's not going to be any more war, there's not going to be any more hunger, there's not going to be any more strife, and godliness will be revealed in this world with the coming of the Messiah, of the Mashiach. God bless you. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being our family. And uh, we hope to hear good news soon. God bless. Take care.